Hello, Carnies, and welcome to this week's episode of Sideshow. I'm Jock. I'm Joe. And this is our second Christmas-themed Sideshow. Uh, this one is, uh, uh, you know, it's not an order, it's not a ranking, it's just kind of a rambling of our... Not a ranking? Oh, go. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this episode is all about Christmas animated specials. Most importantly, the Rankin Bass Christmas animated specials from television that started in the 60s with uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. The stop-motion animated classics, and we'll go down the list of the hits and misses. Yeah, well, I mean, I want to stay up and like not really go into like you know um, the 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 sheer. Every toy at one, you know, Barbie's Christmas, Garfield's Christmas. Right. I mean, we may touch upon the um, California Raisins Christmas, just as a, th- a little shout out to Jim. Sure, sure. Yeah, well, let's just stick with the true classics. Okay, good. That being one of them. Um, but yeah, go ahead. The, the, fir- the first one, and again, it's amazing. These These are the evergreens. These are the ones that were part of my mom's childhood in, in some cases, and definitely my childhood and yours. But the first one was How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the the original animated one, and that was fifty seven. What? Yeah. So my yeah. Uh, Are you uh, sure? I am. I am sure. That, but that's uh, that's pre color. <laughs> no, honestly, that like fifty seven sounds a little late or a little early rather. Let me look this up. Oh, we got to stop tape. Uh, that, that's the red. Oh, yeah, that's right. the book. What are you talking that's about? That's the book. You want the you want the oh, television special. Oh, oh, see how dumb I am. He doesn't know how to no. read. Not very well. No, but then that would mean the first one. Yeah, let's. Hulk <laughs> 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 <Hulk's> smash console. <laughs> So then the first one would be Rudolph. Yeah, uh, you're right. 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 Well, you were actually, right. it was like Rudolph, and then um, and then after that. Would be the uh, the actually I, honestly I don't know which came first Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer or a Charlie Brown Christmas Rudolph was sixty four Charlie Brown was sixty five there you go and so Rudolph so which one came first the chicken okay <laughs> so the funny thing and, and Joe and I've talked about this recently Rudolph was the epitome of my childhood like that that I loved everything about it and I still do the funny thing is you know my oldest when he was born in uh, two thousand seven born with a club foot. And I remember that was in September. He was born in September. And then when Christmas rolls around and it's his first Christmas and the wife and I are watching it. And the fact that, you know, Santa himself is telling Dasher he should be ashamed of his child's birth defect. You should be ashamed of yourself. I mean, it, it was like, it was the first time it hit me. It's like, wait a minute, this is just how he was born. This is, and, and, I, and I don't want to say birth defect because we know it would Rudolph and it ended up being a great thing that he had the red nose. But the whole movie, and I never really realized that behind. They're fucking awful to her. And, and we know they wouldn't let him play any reindeer games. We know the song. We know the history. But it's like, I just looked at the special different. It's like, they were a dicks. Well, that's the whole point, is that you see them, that they were not always the jolly, accepting community. Like, this was sort of like the the origin story of, like, maybe Santa... Becoming a better person, you know, maybe he was kind of dickish, and the he had, coach. The coach was definitely right. a dick. All right, all right, you boys, line up. Well, not bad for a first try. Anyways, <laughs> pretty good. Keep going. Oh, I don't know any more lines. <laughs> uh, but but the whole we're not going to let Rudolph play. All right. And we're not going to let Rudolph play any of our reindeer games, right? Right. I mean, like, rallying, like, here's the coach being the bully, <laughs> like, putting <laughs> putting the, you know, putting the, the lynch mob together. But that's the whole point, is that the whole community, it's all about discrimination and then accepting of people's, you know, diversities. You know, it's like you had the, 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 the Rudolph character who had a so quote unquote birth defect who was different, who made him different, and it turned out that it was, it helped him at the end of the episode. But then you also had, um, Hermie the elf who wanted to be a dentist, which is what they called it back in those days. <laughs> I believe I believe he was a confirmed bachelor. Yeah. Ha, ha. But, you know, he didn't want to be an elf and make all the toys. He was different. He wanted to be a dentist. Ah, oh, dentist! 
And if you look at a lot of those elves, I think some of them were British. <laughs> <laughs> well, which is ironic. Well, honestly, which, you know, a dentist would come in handy with British. That's why I, you oh, know. Shit, I'm cutting that, that out. out. Oh, no, shut, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. I can edit the podcast. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean, and, and then the, it was great. The Island of Misfit Toys. It's, it's. We're on the island of misfit toys. Yeah, and then yeah, you had um, the lion that was sort of like oversaw everybody on the lion. Well, okay. name the one toy that was prominent that did not have a defect. Yes, and this is this did not have an obvious defect. I'm I'm just gonna put it out there. All gingers matter. <laughs> <laughs> what was wrong with the red-headed doll? Uh, she had red hair. Yeah, like that's that, honest, that was it. But Anne Margaret was like huge later. I think maybe right. maybe she was the maybe. You know what? I think the redheaded doll broke the ground for women like Anne Margaret to become successful. But in how, their fun, how funny is that? That the doll was shunned and on the island of misfit toys, but for no apparent reason because it was a ginger. No, but it was never clearly stated. It was just implied. But we know. I have no more tears left to cry. Wait a minute. Look. It can't be. It is. It is. It's Santa. That's I'm just gonna a, do the whole fucking. No, go for you. please. I, I, like I. Did. Who ever heard of a Charlie in the box? <laughs> I, I did. I said to Joe, we should Facebook Live this. And he's like, no, but this is gold. Like, I'm just sitting back enjoying him. Like, that's not a soundboard. That all those all those different voices and sounds. It's an autistic person <laughs> screaming yeah. into a microphone. He is very artistic, and thank you for sharing that with us. But yeah, but Rudolph is definitely the one that kicked it off. And and today it's it's something that I, I think it stands the test of time. Over 50 years old, and it, it I don't see it. Oh, God. Ending. I mean, it plays every year on CBS or ABC or whomever, whomever owns it now. Re- really quick, like Joe was explaining to me, uh, the CBS holiday logo and the music behind it. Oh, no. The, the CBS special presentation logo, which we touched upon on a couple of sideshows ago, in doing research on the logo that we incorporated into that podcast, I found out that the logo was actually spliced together using four elements of the same song which was used in i think either the theme or the soundtrack to hawaii 5 like the bongos the sting the like that big thing at the end like that was all part of one song that some genius who goes uncredited in life took the secret to his grave that he edited the most iconic special presentation sting in television history the second special um was uh charlie brown it was Charlie Brown. Oh. <laughs> Fire! <laughs> Do it. <clears throat> Finally tonight, Charlie Brown, America's favorite cancer kid. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, and that's uh, that was the second Charlie Brown special. It was like, you know, here's Charlie Brown, or here comes Charlie Brown, then the Christmas special, and then the following year was the Halloween special. And again, that's, you know, it's one of those... We've talked about the last couple of weeks on the podcast, the family, we went to a Christmas tree farm. And of course, as you're going out, they have like the, I don't know, what do you call baby trees? Like like every year. Like they, baby furs or whatever. Yeah. Like when you chop down a tree this year, next year they dig, you know, in the spring, they'll dig up the root, put in a new one. Baby. And every time you see a little tiny Saplings. one foot sapling, two or three branch tree. Do not the Charlie Brown tree every time. Yeah, and we were so we we were in the woods and we see it. I'm like, oh, Charlie Brown tree. Now we were in Target. They sell Charlie Brown trees. That's wrong. They, I think Charlie Brown would be sad because his whole thing was like commercialization of Christmas. Good grief! Right, but and the irony is he bought this awful little unwanted tree, being an awful unwanted cancer boy, as you say, or as John Oliver would say, right. But, yes, they do sell it. I mean, here it is. Again, 50-plus years later, you do not see a small pine tree without calling it the Charlie Brown tree. Yeah. And then, by the way, I know that Saturday Night Live's Saturday TV Funhouse made fun of this, but what was with the magic ability of all the kids at the end of the Charlie Brown episode to, like, gather around the tree, wave their arms back and forth, and then magically turn the Charlie Brown tree... The shitty sapling that sagged from the one ornament that hung from its branch 
into this majestic, you know, popcorn laden neon light extravaganza. The power of love, Joe. Oh yes. The power the Which love is a curious thing. Of children. Makes one man weep and makes and another, another man, man sing. sing. <laughs> And, and and truly is not the music from that Charlie Brown special just yeah I, it, it, no matter how many times you hear you know Schroeder you know you know tickling the uh, the ivories right. there clink 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 that's it they uh again we don't have to worry about copyright because that was not the actual sound from the special don't break the fourth wall man and again that's one of those ones that you know my kids without being prompted and and and, and it forced down their their throat that charlie brown and christmas special is awesome you will appreciate this historical like you know achievement here they love it and it's the one time that i think makes the actual story of Christmas cool. When Linus tells it at the end, lights please. <laughs> and he tells a story about the birth of Christ. And for a millisecond, you buy into it. You're like, hmm. Oh, wait, no. It's just bullshit. <laughs> it's just selling toys. But it was it great. I mean, that that special is, uh, is, is just good. And then I think if the next one was Frosty, which oh, yeah. was 60, well, 69. 69. Nice. Nice. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, baby. Yeah, this guy knows the score. <laughs> Frosty the Snowman, narrated by Jimmy Durante. Frosty in the Snowman was a jolly happy. Finally tonight, Jimmy Durante. <laughs> uh, is that his... I mean, honestly, so I'm born in 69. I think... Was he in like a Mad, 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 Mad world, or was this his last prominent role? I think he was in a Mad... Yeah, he was in a Mad, 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 Mad world, which I think was 64. But um, who knows? I don't know the the oeuvre of Jimmy Durante. But this was this was not stop-motion animation. This was traditional hand-drawn animation. But... Um, I don't know. You know, every so often I'll like, you know, wake up in the morning and I'll have to wake up my kids for school, my younger kids especially, and I'll just wake them up and go, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll know what I'm talking about. It's great. And, and, and I, you know, we just watched it and it is. This is one of those ones the other day where I just went, you know, we just got, you know, cable for the first time in like five years and I don't want it. But the cool thing is the, the remote, you can just say Christmas specials and they all come up. And I made sure I went and I record. I think I have most of them on Apple TV and I know mo everyone is online. And it's really weird to say for somebody who hates commercials, generally speaking, it's kind of nice to see it on regular TV. It's nice to have that logo come up and the whole... It's funny because in modern television, you have more commercials be you know, in during commercial breaks, so they'll have to extend the runtime. So it doesn't go from like 8 to 8.30, it will go to 8 to 8.45 8 or right. something, you know, because they want to get the whole special in from 1969. But back then they had like one, literally one minute commercial breaks. Oh, wait, was uh, Cornelius, Yukon Cornelius. That's coming up. Oh, that's coming up. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. I'm, you know, just, I'm just jumping yeah. ahead a little bit because I was thinking about, you know, that for a second. Don't blow your snow. <laughs> so coming up next, I guess, would be Santa, Santa Claus, Claus is coming, coming to, town to town. Right. With Fred Astaire, uh, 1970. And uh, I have, as part of my decorations, I haven't put it up yet, but I have the actual mail truck oh, that's with great. Fred Astaire. And it, like you push a button and it plays the Santa Claus is coming to town theme song, like including his like ramping, like his ramp up to it. Yeah, he's great. Mickey Rooney did the voice of Santa Claus. He had a bunch of great songs, uh, none of which are coming to mind besides Santa Claus is coming to town. But yeah, what uh, was that song? Oh no, wait, no, you can't Cornel I, I fucked up. Yeah, Yukon Cornelius was Rudolph. Where's Ru Rudolph? Oh fuck! You go to YouTube, yeah. and there were some deleted scenes. That are that used to be rare to find, and no matter how many times, and I don't know why, when they had different, you know, when it came out on video, when it came out on DVD, when it came out on Blu-ray, very often they left out. There was cut scenes that explained while you corn Cornelius when he would like, you know, hit the ice and then lick his axe and stuff like that. Well, he was looking for peppermint. Right, right. But that's uh, that was it, at the end of the show, though. He's like, well, that was during the show. He's like, you know, Yahoo, and then he like. Mm -hmm. Nothing, <laughs> <laughs> but those. But there are. There's some deleted scenes that I don't know why they didn't. It's like, wait a minute, why did you, was this censored or was it a time type thing? Right. But there are. There's some really good articles. But, but Santa Claus is coming to town. 
I got to pull that up on the computer here. There was a radio version of that in 1934, and so this was, you know, based off of that. Uh, but it is. It's it's like that. You know, that's one of my favorite stories. And I'm again, look, yeah, I'm looking down the list of songs. Sorry, uh, uh, the first toy makers to the king. He's the first, the first toy, toy maker, maker to, to the, the king. king. Burger Meister Meister Burger. There'll yeah. be no more toy makers to the king. Yeah, that, oh God. No, but this, if, if you know it, keep singing that because it is a great song. You put one foot put in front, front of, of the other, other and soon you'll be walking across the, the floor. floor. Yep. One foot in front of the other, soon you'll be walking out, out the, the door. door. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, no, that that is, and again, it's like I'm glad that the campiness has not been a uh, that that my my kids are too cool for school and they love that shit. I think these are officially the only uh, show tunes that are acceptable to sing. <laughs> right? I mean, like, honestly, we're singing show tunes, essentially. We're singing show tunes. Snow tunes. Oh! oh. Uh, we're two middle-aged guys sitting in a basement singing each other's snow tunes. Oh, God, we'll be blowing each other later. <laughs> I mean, let's just come on, say it. But so, I mean, that was just such a great era. And it's like, by the time you come around, I've seen these four or five times on TV and stuff like that. But my favorite... In this era, was a year without a Santa Claus. That was also Mickey Rooney, but uh, that also introduced the characters of the Snow Miser and the Heat Miser. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that was my favorite childhood Christmas special song. All right, here's a little holiday treat for you. I'm going to pull up the Snow Miser song on YouTube, and we're going to sing along and ruin it for you. <laughs> And that way we can't get copyright claimed because we're singing over it. Yeah, yeah bitches. So, hold on a second. Here we go. Killer trombone. I'm Mr. Mr. White Christmas. Christmas. I'm Mr. Snow. I'm Mr. Icicle. Icicle. I'm Mr. Ten Below. Friends call me Snow Miser. Whatever I touch turns to I feel my clutch. I'm too much. I can't see it because Joe has the laptop facing him. The little, the little minion dancing next to him, just absolutely no. You don't turn around, but I mean, just epic. Yeah. Now let me get to to the heat miser song. And again, anybody who's like you know younger, like you know our friend William, who might be listening. Who's also Jewish? William, watch this. Sam, watch this. It is absolutely great. It's it's. This is non-denomination. It is no, no, but the whole Christmas and and that that whole era of stop motion was just fantastic. Let's bring it down a little bit. I'm Mr. Green Christmas. I'm Mr. Sun. I'm Mr. Heat Monster. I'm Mr. 101. They call me Heat Miser. Whatever I touch starts to melt in my clutch. <laughs> I'm too much. And who was there? And who was their mother? Uh, Mother Nature. Yes, and the whole premise was well, they they wanted it to they they made it. She brokered a deal between her sons where one would let it snow where it doesn't snow for Christmas, and the other one would let it be uh, like you know a hot sunny day. So before we go too far into the seventies, let's actually talk about the Grinch who stole Christmas because that's a huge classic. And I know we kind of had a false start with the dates. Right, who right. Who fucking cares? It came out in the sixties. It was color. It was wonderful. Um, your favorite parts of Grinch? I mean, you know, the song. I don't know if it's my favorite part, but Max the dog. I absolutely <laughs> Max the dog. It's like, and 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 <clears throat> if you're not a dog person, well, you're probably not a good person. But but that is the epitome of a dog. You know what I mean? No matter how much crap he took from the Grinch, he was still just loved him so much. But of course, like anything like Dr. Seuss and the rhyming, the whole Whoville thing, yep. and, and and we, you know, probably a good dozen times got to see the Whoville show at Universal Studio and stuff like that, which is really a great thing. And who did the narration? Pop quiz hotshot. Who did the narration? 
Boris Karloff. Nice. Yeah. Right, right, right. As soon as you said, and, and like, he Duh. took the last can of who hash. <laughs> and it is. It's so heartbreaking when he's looking at Susie Lou and he's like, and his uh, t- tears are welling up, or the tears are welling up in her eyes. I'm and, taking the tree back to my shop. Santa? Oh yeah. There's a there's a bulb on this tree that won't light on one side, so I'm taking it back there and bringing it back here. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, but then, of course, the redemption and the whole thing about the Christmas, you know, spirit and, and cliche, cliche, cliche is like how how when the Grinch realized it's like they didn't care that they didn't have the tree in this that they just you know had each other and were singing and stuff like that. That's mm. that's great. And they say that his heart grew three sizes that day, granting him the strength of ten Grinches. Times two. <laughs> I'm reading off a of Wikipedia page and ruining it for you. No, no, but but it is like and, and it, Chuck, Chuck Jones was the animator of that. By did, the way. did you? Uh, what do you think of the Jim Carrey reprisal? Eh, a little too dark. Ron yeah. Howard directed, Jeffrey Tambor in it, Clint Howard. Uh, you know, I think uh, Christine Baranski and all these other people. But um, and the first time he did had put on the makeup, seven hours. Yeah, I mean, he was great. In the movie, and it was Jim Carrey at his most Jim Carrey ish. Um, I'll say Liar Liar is his most Jim Carrey ish. That's pure Jim Carrey. If you want to get on a Jim Carrey tangent, I will fight you. <laughs> um, no, but he was great in that movie, but the movie itself was just a little too, uh, like cheap look. I don't know, it was grand looking, but it was also kind of chintzy at the same time, which was, I think, they were going they for They were going, I think. The Whoville was very chintzy, but it was just too dark for me. I don't know. I, I didn't dig it. But given the choice, uh, 99 out of 100 times plus two, I'm going to watch the animated Grinch. Oh, absolutely. And then, um, I mean, just, but just like the notion of the Grinch is just universal now. Like you, everybody that like hates Christmas is not like just a, a, a Scrooge or they're a Grinch, you know? Right, right. You know, there's always news stories of like Grinches who take, you know, like the Grinch that stole the nativity scene off the lawn of some church or something like that. You know, like those, the Grinch is in our lexicon now. Right, right, right. And it's like, you know, as much as we've talked last week about how much Scrooge is my favorite Christmas that, you know, one of my two favorite. Yeah, it, it's it's Grinch is the one that you always like defer to first. So, and then A Year Without a Santa Claus was 74. And then I'm trying to think, there's nothing that really, well, I, for I, a while. The ones that I remember, I mean... That when my boys were younger, my wife and I were like really into like let's bring Christmas to them, and like oh, all these things started to come out on DVD. Like DVD was like the gate, the portal to like all these TV shows and specials that you can now have in your house and watch in April if you wanted to. So we went out and bought all these DVDs, and so they became sort of fresh in our minds every year. We like we didn't like go years without seeing that. Oh yeah, I forgot Rudolph, you know, or yeah, or like we would you know find the more obscure ones like. Rudolph's Shiny New Year was 1976. That was a classic. That's where he had to save Baby New Year, and he had to go to, like, different islands. Like, right, right. And, like, he, he met up, like, Red Skelton was like, No, I did voice. not have that on my list, but now that you're talking about the going to the different islands. Yeah, he went to, you know, 1776. They called me Seb. Oh. <laughs> like, you know, it was, it was Ben Franklin. Are you, um, are you glossing over a Wookiee Christmas? Are we? Are we? Are we just? We're talking we animated. Going? Okay. All right. That great, might great. be a whole sideshow <laughs> in and of itself. That um, might be the Christmas one, the one that comes out on Christmas. So I think for for me, the next uh, stop motion animated, really special special, Nightmare Before Christmas, and we talked about this during our Halloween episode. Is it a Christmas special? Is it a Halloween special? It's both. It's a flow wax. <laughs> uh, so we, uh, but I do that. That's one that I'm going to say there is probably more Jack Skellington uh, paraphernalia in our world than there is Santa stuff in our world. And that's, you know, that's management. That's me. That's the boys. If given the choice, let's decorate the tree with. Oogie and all the characters from Nightmare Before Christmas or the classic Santa Claus stuff. We're going to go Nightmare Before Christmas. We were debating because we had for several years a fake, a, a black tree, a black Christmas tree. I mean, that's always like, but she does. She, she liked the black tree and um, 
And we were going to get one of those before we're like, nah, we live right next door to a Christmas tree farm. Let's go get one. But yeah, I mean, Nightmare Before Christmas, and I don't know where you were in it, but I'm going to put it in my top five, probably, Christmas specials. It's in my top three Halloween specials. Now, by the way, you're Christmas. calling it a special. That was a full-length full movie. And, man, that was in the movies, man. That was like you had to buy a ticket to see it. And you, it and you know, you know, I mean, that's one of those ones where um, everybody in it was great. You know, the music is Danny Elfman. And Tim Burton, so Tim Burton, because of his age, you know, when this all starts in 64, that's when he's a kid. And, I, I, you know, I haven't looked into it, but I guarantee that those Christmas specials were probably, you know, that and um, I'm trying to think what other stop animations were at the time. I was going to say, like, the Thunder... What, Thunderbirds? Thunderbirds Go, but that that, <laughs> that was the marionette puppets. Um but yeah, that probably you know was was a life dream of his to pay an homage to those movies by by making Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, we, before we get into like the more modern stuff, I do want to touch upon a TV Christmas special that I would watch constantly as a kid. Not so much recently. Yogi's First Christmas. Oh man, no. What? No, no that. Well, I mean, when what? when that came out, I mean, by the time that came out, um. Yeah, you know. it was 1980 when it came out. But like for me, growing up, I watched this like like a, a happy little boy. right. <laughs> but you also watched probably a Garfield Christmas. Yeah, yeah, and, and Alvin and the Chipmunks. And maybe um, I'm going out on. Uh, I, I I don't know if I'm. Uh, I'm alone on this. I fucking hate Alvin and the Chipmunks oh, yeah. and everything about them. The fucking Christmas albums, everything. Um, but right. it started with Christmas crap, you know, with them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like to go back in time. If I had a time machine, the one thing I do, no, I'm not going to go stop Hitler. I'm going to go kill the guy who invented Alvin and the Chipmunks. But you're not, so you can't, I can't bond with you on Yogi's first Christmas. No. And this holiday gem? <laughs> Coming up Christmas time. I mean, it stars one of your favorite animated characters, Huckleberry Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that song reminds me of when you go into a restaurant and they they, they don't want to pay the copyright to sing Happy Birthday, so they have to write their own Happy this Birthday This is the Chuck E. Song. Cheese version That's of We Wish Chuck You Merry Cheese version <laughs> of Merry Christmas. Um, I don't know. I, I have a uh, fondness for it. Yeah, it's Hanna Barbera Schlock. I don't know. I, that played on Channel 56 in Boston a lot, so um, I grew up in it, and I liked it. So, all right, let's let's jump for it. Are there are, are there good modern Christmas specials that you that you think are great? Uh, modern Christmas specials. Uh, honestly, I kind of kind of fallen out of it. I mean, I'm sure there are, are there, like well, there is one that plays every year. It's the Toy Story one. Um, I think what is it called? Uh, bup, 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 bup. Sorry, boys and girls, I have to go into the internet machine. Toy Story that time forgot came out in 2014. That's the one where the little girl from Toy Story three now has possession of the toys, and she goes to visit her rich kid friend who's like playing Xbox in the other room, but ignoring the room o toys that he has, you know, across the hall. That has like this big dinosaur village. Like it's like everything from this dinosaur like robot line. Right. Like the all the environments and everything is set up in this other room and he's just ignoring it because he, he's playing Xbox. And then the Toy Story uh, gang get thrown in with the backpack into this room and then they're like, you know, captured and it's great. It's I I liked it a lot. No, it's, I, I do like that. Here's one that's going to surprise you that I absolutely love. It's really going to surprise you. Hitler's First Christmas. Oh, the music in that, <laughs> stunning. When Ava Braun comes out and sings, uh, no, uh, well. Gives a whole meaning to White Christmas. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> but we uh, wait. You're not going to touch that. <laughs> Who's going to touch it then? We got to get it out of here. Uh, being agnostic and and not being into the whole like you know the little town of Bethlehem and drummer boy thing. It's shocking for me to tell you, a Veggie Tales Christmas is absolutely awesome. 
Good night, everybody. Seriously. I mean, the Veggie Tale thing, it's uh, anybody who doesn't know it, it's, I don't know if you want, if it's CGI. I don't know the kind of animation it is. And it doesn't throw religion in your face too much, but it's definitely like faith based. It, it, it leans into the Jesus. It leans into. But they have a Christmas special, and the and the great thing is, like you know, this evil business guy is uh, is pushing this doll called the Buzzsaw Louie. That's a toy with its real what one of its arms is a real working buzzsaw, uh-huh. and the whole thing is it's like you know, is that really safe for kids? My favorite line is. They have these commercials playing, and the kids are watching the commercial. It's like, oh, you have to get this Buzzsaw Louie. And don't forget, Billy has more toys than you. <laughs> That's the whole commercial. And the kids go running into their father's, Dad, buy us a Buzzsaw Louie. Billy has more toys than us. And the father's like, who's Billy? I don't know, but he has more toys than us. <laughs> um, so shockingly, I'm a real big fan of VeggieTales Christmas. Was that directed by Kirk Cameron? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but the the other modern ish day Christmas movie that oh, oh I was gonna guess which one it was. Okay, guess. No, you said movie and it threw me uh, off. Not movie. I I I misspoke. But my favorite. Shrek the Halls. Shrek the Halls is not uh, it. Um, and I don't know if management found it, if the boys stumbled upon it, but we on Apple TV found it a couple years ago when we were in Qatar. I knew nothing about it, but I guess it had been out for a few years. Uh, prepped and Landing. Uh, it is great. Um, oh, prep and landing. Prep and landing. I'm a huge Kids of the Hall fan, so, I mean, instantly it's like Dave Foley's voice comes through. It is a really, really good Christmas special. I mean, I love the fact that it's an absolute non-denominational, non-like, you know, hocus pocus. I'm not going on it for Christmas right now. No. Um, and then it actually had a sequel, which I'm assuming you saw the sequel first. It had two sequels, sir. I haven't seen the third one yet. I'm looking at the internet now, and it's, you have Prep and Landing in 2009. You have Prep and Landing Operation Secret Santa in 2010. And you have Prep and Landing Naughty versus Nice. See, Naughty versus... Okay, so I've seen, I've seen one in three. I don't know if we've seen oh, two. Oh, gives th- you something to look forward it, to this it, holiday it, season. It, why am I here talking to you? <laughs> uh, but that is. That's a really modern-day Christmas special that finds its way into... Uh, our animated library, and we will watch that like you know once or twice. Maybe next week we'll talk non-animated Christmas specials. But uh, but I think that wraps up yeah, let's the look, big ones yeah, for me. The, the, the for for you the um, let me just go down here the list just to see if I can jog some more memories or some future memories. Because have you seen a Miser Brothers Christmas special? I have not. That's from two thousand eight, and it was pretty darn good. I, I liked it. It's CG. But it's it, it it's faithful. I liked it a lot. Like it's like uh And it's two thousand eight. Yeah, and it's Rankin it's 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 not made by Rankin Bass, but it was like sort of appropriated from the obviously the Miser Brothers from the the, the, the special. But yeah, it's from Warner Brothers animation. Who cares? Uh it, but it's good. Like uh, if you can dig it up, it's probably on the internet. Uh, Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol is up there. You know, even like Bugs Bunny Christmas uh, Mickey's um, Christmas Carol? Yeah, no, I'm not, I mean, like... You're I, Mr. Disney. I, yeah, I, I am, but I'm not that Disney Disney, you know, it's like... You're new Disney. I'm, You're fresh I'm this old, year. I'm really old, old, old Disney, oh, okay. or I'm really new, new Disney, yeah. but I'm going to say, like, the 70s and 80s and 90s, you know, Disney, where they did the, you know, they did the whole Scrooge thing, and, like, you know, Scrooge McDuck is, uh, what role did he play? Oh, yeah. Scrooge, <laughs> you know. Are we counting any of the Jim Henson stuff, the Muppets? Yeah, I mean, some of the Muppet stuff was great. The what was it? A Muppets Christmas Carol. Yep. Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Saw that on your shelf today, and I'm like, my wife loved it growing up. I, I didn't grow up with it as much as maybe my wife did, but uh, yeah, it's cute. It, it's it's a one off. Uh, Christmas Eve on Sesame Street, though, that's a good one because that has Mr. Hooper in it. And that has all the feels, man. That's like 1978. I was just, you know, a, a wee lad. And then, like, they would replay that every year on Channel 2 PBS, you know, into the 80s. And it was that's great. Um, John Denver and the Muppets at Christmas together. Yeah, that one. That uh, one I remember. Elmo Saves Christmas. These are now we're getting into, like, the areas where we don't give a shit 
Sid the Science Kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, every single show. The Power Rangers had apparently f- no less than seven Christmas episodes. Every Every toy has a Christmas thing. I will say, if anybody out there goes and buys Elf on a Shelf Christmas story, I will find you, and I will come to your house, and I will punch you in the neck. That's everything bad about, like, Christmas marketing and uh, and stuffing something down your face. Uh, any lines you want me to recite as any character from any of your beloved Christmas uh, specials before we leave? Yeah, give me a You know, I will never tire of, of Herbie the Dentist. Oh, Hermie? And, and, and Hermie, is he also Jewish? <laughs> and uh, No, because he is an elf and he works for Santa. Right. He's, okay. he's I don't know. Um, I mean, maybe they were trying to get all the stereotypes in one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm independent. Why am I such a misfit? I am not just a nitwit. You can't fire me. I quit. Seems I don't fit in. <laughs> See? Why am I such a misfit? <laughs> I am not just a net wet. You can fire me. Bullshit. <laughs> Why won't I fit in? Oh, whatever, man. I think I think the Paul Lynn Christmas special <laughs> that, that I believe uh, is, is forthcoming. Oh, you think I unearthed the... one of my favorite? Oh, let's go a little deeper in the web. Oh, look what I found. Um, very often, our friend Orly listens from France, and if you are Orly, I am sorry. Um, if there are some things that you know, Christmas specials that you know that you say, hey, you should take a look at this. Please, you know, uh, email me, text us, tweet us. Facebook Joe, Facebook the show, but that's Facebook and Joe because pretty much I'm not on Facebook. And then uh, I think we're going to do a couple more of these. I, I definitely we got a couple more weeks before Christmas, so I'm thinking Christmas songs. I definitely yeah, probably Christmas songs, uh, toys maybe that we Christmas were, toys yeah, maybe. But I, I want to do I want to do favorite Christmas specials. Yeah, that, that might include some of these. But we we may have to just do a whole one on the Star Wars holiday special. I don't see us having a choice. All right, I think that's the piece de resistance. Um, oh, and and um, yeah, beforehand, uh, you know, we should tweet out the link of the um, the, the writer who talked about that. You sent me that ten minute clip. Oh, of Bruce Valanche. Bruce Valanche. Yeah. yeah, him talking about it is the like, Star Wars holiday special. Woo! Yeah, that's a goodie. Do you do you watch? Do you listen to that interview first and then watch the special, or do you watch the special and then watch his interview? You could. Uh, that's a good primer. That's a good, um, you know, lube, if you will, okay. before you go. Because man, when you're into that Star Wars holiday special, you have to commit. That's yep. that. Like that, that's, you have to take a couple of shots. Of I was going to say, Daniels. like, do you suggest? Uh, do you suggest like you know, uh, you know, throwing back a few pints or uh, having some edibles if that's watch your thing? It, watch it with friends or watch it with the Riff Tracks soundtrack, where they, you know, the Riff Tracks. Right. Uh, I won't get into it now, but watch it. Look up the Riff Tracks version of the Star Wars Holiday Special, and you're welcome. Uh, That ends it for us. Thank you for tuning in. And do not forget...